Hello everyone, today I'm here to share with you all of the books I read in the month of June. So in total, I read 12 books in the month of June, which is really good, I'm happy. I read the most in the summer because I'm outside a lot, um, my kid's outside a lot, so that's just why. I'm also sweat profusely while I'm reading outside, but that's a different story. So a lot of these I've reviewed, I think, hopefully, uh, I don't know if I, do, if I have reviewed any of them, I'll link them down below and in cards, but I'm gonna start with my least favorite book I read, working up to my favorite. Let's get into it because there's 12 books, there's a lot. The first book I want to talk about is We Can't Keep Meaning Like This by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is her newest YA contemporary book and this is my least favorite of hers. I ugh, I just didn't love it which surprised me because it's all about weddings. We follow a character named Quinn whose parents are wedding planners. She's like in the wedding business so she's always helping with it and her parents are pretty much like hoping she'll take over the business and like even selected her college courses and stuff like that. The only problem is Quinn doesn't want any of it, but she doesn't know how to voice that she doesn't want it. So basically this book takes place over the summer. Quinn's trying to figure out how to tell her parents that she doesn't want to deal with this wedding business. Also, there's this guy named Tariq who she's had a big crush on and he comes back in the picture, only he rejected her last year when she, you know, confessed her feelings and things like that. So it was okay. I just didn't love it. I think Quinn was just very immature, but I think it goes with the age, as I've always said, especially with YA books. Take my review, take my reviews with a grain of salt because I'm not the intended age range for them. But she just, I wish she could have spoken her feelings sooner. It would have caused, it would have prevented a lot of conflict. But that's just me. I gave it a three. It's not a horrible book by any means. It just wasn't my favorite Rachel and Solomon book because I loved her past three, and this one I just sadly didn't. Next up, we have a mystery thriller, and that is Local Woman Missing by Mary Kabika. This is my third Mary Kabika book, and I've enjoyed her previous two books that I've read. This one, I, I just, I didn't like. I gave it a three. I just, it wasn't super memorable. Memorable. Ugh, I'll be struggling with that. Um, basically, we have two different timelines. We have um, back like 19 years ago, back like 13 years ago, these two women and a girl go missing. And then 13 years later, the girl emerges and you try to figure out things of who exactly did what. And I just, I just found it kind of far-fetched and I didn't, I wasn't really invested in any of the characters. I didn't love the storyline. So I don't know. I think I'm harshest mostly on Mr. Sillers. Why? I don't know because I am no expert on the genre whatsoever, but I, I don't know. I just, I didn't love it. Sad to say. Next up is a book that's coming out in September, I believe, and that is The Girls Are Never Gone. So this is being pitched as The Conjuring Meets Sadie, which I think I agree with. We follow this character named Dare who has this podcast where she talks about ghosts, or no, she's a YouTube channel where she talks about ghosts and she's moving it to a podcast. And basically, sorry, I have to look on my Goodreads because I've read so many books. I forget <laughs> what the synopsis are about. So basically she um, goes to this place in Arlington Estate where this um, 30 years ago this girl drowned and so she's trying to figure out exactly how that happened. She's like you know doing an internship at this house to clean it up or restore it but she's also having a podcast on the side to try to figure out this mystery and things like that and that's all you need to know about it. I will say it's a great fall read. It's gonna it's very atmospheric. The house is creepy but it just there wasn't much to it. It is a YA horror technically so I don't know. I'm usually a huge scaredy cat. This one didn't scare me a ton and I just wish it was a little bit more creepy. It could be just me. But then again, like I said, it's a great spooky read and I will recommend it in the fall for like atmospheric books and things like that. So I gave it like a three. It was decent. The cover is amazing, but I just kind of wanted more oomph uh, from it, if you get what I'm saying. Next up, another three. I, let a, I read a lot of like kind of middle of the road books. Three stars, just so you know, are not bad ratings for me. Three stars are average. They're in the middle for me. I neither loved it nor did I like loathe it. It's just kind of right smack dab in the middle. So it's not a bad rating for me at all. She's kind of right there in the middle. So my next three stars, Less Chance Books by Kelsey Roadkey. This follows a character named Madeline who works at her aunt's like indie bookstore. It's like a family bookstore and she loves it. And then their business kind of goes under when a new bookstore, like a, um, a corporate bookstore, think of like Barnes & Noble, moves in across the street and it kind of threatens their business. And she's like, oh. She also has this flirtation going on with this guy named Jasper that she learns actually works at this bookstore across the street. So they, of course, end up having a rivalry, try to take each other's business down, and it kind of goes from there. It was cute. I mean, if you like books set in bookstores, this might be the book for you. But Madeline was immature. Like, she just handled things not the best, in my opinion, and 
I don't know. I just kind of, again, as I've said with a lot of my three-star books this month, I just wanted kind of more um from it, if you get what I'm saying. I wanted Madeline to be a little bit more mature. I wanted her to be more logical and things like that. So I don't know. But I say, you know, if you're a big fan of books, just in the bookstore setting, this is a really cute one to read. Next up, a three and a half, so we're getting up there, is Wait For It by Jen McKinley. I read a book by hers last year um, that I really enjoyed. This one is about a character named Annabelle who moves to like Phoenix, Arizona to kind of escape an engagement that she doesn't want any a part of. And from there, she rents out this guest house of this like mysterious, elusive, like millionaire that she never sees. And he's got very strict rules for her. She's a graphic designer, so that plays into the book at all and more and she learns more about this you know owner of the house and how he's young and how he's had a stroke and how it's really affected him and of course the relationship happens and that's kind of what the book's about it's a very chiclety romancy book that i enjoyed honestly um i didn't like it nearly as much as her book that i read last year what was it called oh paris is always a good idea that's what the book's called i like that one a little bit more but this one um is cute it is kind of a spin-off of that book because it takes place because it's all about the main character's sister from that book. You don't need to read the first book in the series at all, if it even is a series of spinoff. But I enjoyed it, a three and a half out of five. It was a solid romance. Like it wasn't one of my favorites, but it was a solid one. Another three and a half is The Dating Dare by J.C. Lee. This is another kind of spinoff sequel to her previous book, A Sweet Mess. This one we follow a character named Tara, and she works at this brewery, her family's brewery, and she loves it. And she gets involved with this guy named Seth, and they definitely have attraction for each other, but he's leaving, like, um, to move to Paris in, like, a month. So he's like, hey, let's do, like, this dating dare, and let's, like, date and have four dates, and let's just, you know, let it be just that. And so so Tara's like, you know, what do I have to lose? Let's go for it. And of course, you can see the plot developing from there that feelings emerge and it makes things complicated. I, again, did not like this one nearly as much as the first book I read by this author called A Sweet Mess. I liked that one a little bit more. Um, this one, I didn't feel like the chemistry was like a thousand percent there. I didn't really love the romance a ton. I felt the first book much more realistic with romance, but again, a three and a half out of five solid, you know, romance read. So if I'm going through these fast, I apologize. There's 12 of them. So yeah. I think my last three and a half out of five is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is her newest book. Um, it's about a character named Piper who's very inspired by Alexis from Schitt's Creek. If you've seen that show, what are you doing? You you need to watch it. You're missing out. Um, Piper is a very materialistic, spoiled brat um, woman and her stepdad's like, hey, I'm sick of you being like this, you're gonna go up to um, like Washington in this very small like town in the Pacific Northwest and run your real father's um, dive bar. And so she goes there, it's like a sea kind of like ocean town where there's a lot of fishermen, like think of like deadliest catch type of thing. And there she meets Brennan who is like this surly sea captain. And of course an attraction emerges and you can just guess the plot from there. Piper learns how to grow up, her and Brennan get involved. There's a lot of steamy times involved. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy a lot of Tessa Bailey's books, honestly. They're just fun, steamy, romantic reads, which are perfect for summertime. If you're looking for a summer read, look no further than this one. Like, it's got everything. It's got the steaminess. It's got, like, the whole, like, small town fisherman setting that I love and adore. So I enjoyed it. Three and a half out of five. Solid read. Coming into the four stars now, we have A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Dario. This is my second book by this author. I read her um, previous book, You Had Me at Ola, last year and really enjoyed it. This is a second chance romance and we follow a character named Michelle and she gets a job offer from like her ex best friend, maybe something more, Gabe. And he owns this gym and he needs like some more marketing advice and so he reaches out to Michelle and they haven't talked in like 17 years because they were best friends when they were growing up and even in high school it developed a little bit further and then he just like left. He left New York, he's like I have to leave and he hasn't talked to her and like you know, 13 something years. So it's awkward when they get back together to say the least. But of course, second chance romances, you can guess what happens. They discover their feelings for each other once again. I enjoyed this book a ton. I really enjoy her writing style. I enjoy her steaminess of her books. I enjoy the family aspects of this book and the romance overall, I just really enjoy. So I like this one. As far as like, if I like this one more than You Have Me Ola, 
Oh, that's a tough one. I need to think about it more, but I gave it a four out of five. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next up, we have Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. In this book, we follow a character named Evie who does not believe in love. She's seen her parents' marriage fall apart. She's really jaded on the idea of love. And she loved romance books and she like gets rid of all of her romance books because she's like, I hate romance, like peace out. And one day when she's dropping all of her books off at this local free library, like, you know, one of those like take me ones type of things, <laughs> she sees this old woman that kind of gifts her or curses her with this power of seeing a couple's love story. So every time she sees a couple like kiss, she sees their whole relationship play out, like how they got together, how they're together now, how it's eventually going to end. So it makes her even more jaded on the idea of love. And so she's trying to like get rid of this power and she ends up at this dance studio and she meets this guy named X and somehow they get roped into competing with another to like do this like, um, dance competition like beginner's dance competition and she starts to have feelings for him but she's obviously very apprehensive because of her feelings on you know love so the whole book is about that Nicola Yoon has such a beautiful way of writing I just adore it her endings are always so insanely bittersweet which uh, I wanted to give this one a five but I was like the ending uh but I always will love my favorite book of hers will always be The Sun is Also a Star like I a I'm obsessed with that book. I love that book. But this one is a good one. Um, I wish it was a little bit longer too. I felt like it was really short, which usually is not my complaint whatsoever. But here we are. But I gave it a four. I enjoyed it a ton. I just, I wanted it longer and maybe the ending not to be so insanely sad. And my other four star is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third book in the Kiss Quotient series. And I do recommend reading all of these books in order because all of the characters are enjoying in the book. Like you really need to read them all to like fully appreciate the stories and the characters if you get what I'm saying. So this book we have, it's all about Quan, who we see in the past two books and we've been waiting forever. So it's all about him. Um, and basically, I'm not going to try to spoil it, but I feel like it is a big trigger warning. He has just overcome his battle with cancer. And so he is just now kind of getting back out there in the dating world because Quan in the past two books is a little bit of a playboy. Like he's got no problems in that department. So he's trying to get back out there after this big humongous like ordeal obviously and he meets Anna on a dating site who Anna is a violinist um is that the right word violinist I don't know um and she's like really good but her boyfriend who she's been dating forever decides to like hey let's like before we get married let's like be with some other people to make sure that the marriage is really what we want. And if you think this guy's horrible, you're a thousand percent correct. So Anna's obviously devastated. She's like, what the heck? But she's like, you know what? I'm going to do it because I hate this guy now. And so she so she meets Quan and they plan to have one night together and it kind of goes on from there. This book is a beautiful love story, but it's got a lot of really intense things. Like I said, it's got cancer in it. It's got autism representation, which is amazing. It's got anxiety representation. It also deals a lot with a family member being very sick and being a caretaker for that family member. So if any of that triggers you, just be forewarned before this book because yes, it is a beautiful love story, but it's got a lot of grit and a lot of like kind of heartache to it, um, which is kind of a signature of Helen Huang's, which I've come to love because that's honestly real life in my opinion. I wish our lives could be like a rom-com every day, but it's not. There's a lot of sadness and heartache with life and she really portrays it really well. And again, she represents autism so beautifully well because Anna realizes that she might be on the spectrum and how she discovers it and how she processes it. And you know, autism is a subject very near and dear to my heart. So I love the way she handles it and the way she writes it. So I, I loved it. Um, I'm sad to see the series end, but I'm excited to see what she's gonna do next. She gonna write a new series, a new standalone? I don't know, but I'm here for it because I love her books. This month, I have two five stars. That's right, two. The first one is a book that, this one doesn't come out till September. I know, I'm sorry. If you don't know, I'm pre-reading all the fall books I can because I'm currently pregnant and I'm expecting my second child in September, so I know I'll be reading. Anyway, um, this book is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood, and I gave it a five out of five. I loved it. This book follows a character named Olive who is in the science department. What she does exactly is a great question because I am so unfamiliar with science, it's ridiculous, but she's like a grad student in the science program. She's trying to do a lot of labs and things like that. And basically the book starts off with, 
Um, her best friend has feelings for like Olive's ex-boyfriend who Olive really never liked anyway so she's like date him it's fine but obviously her best friend's like I don't want to do that I don't want to mess up our friendship what a great best friend and so Olive decides to kiss this random professor one day to show on that she is officially over her ex-boyfriend to like, you can date him, you're good, it's all good. And the random guy that Olive kisses is none other than this um, kind of professor, I guess you could say, um, Adam, who everybody at school hates this guy. He is like the worst guy. You don't want him to be on your like student advisory, things like that. Um, and so basically what happens from here is they have to fake date um, because on, you know, still is not very, you know, up on the idea of dating her best friend's ex-boyfriend. She's a great friend, by the way, if I've said that time and time again. But basically her and Adam fake date and she learns that there's much more to him than what everyone sees of him being cold and calculating and things like that. And it's an awesome book. It's all sciencey, so that part didn't really like, I wasn't in love with it, but it taught me a lot because I'm not a science person, but I appreciate seeing more books about women in a very like kind of male dominated field where, you know, the males always have the jobs, always have the upper hands. And Olive was a great character to read about. The fake dating aspect was awesome. I love the romance. Ugh, five out of five. Be on the lookout for this come September because I think it's going to make waves here on booktube and just in the reading world in general because I really loved it. Last book, my favorite book that I read this month, is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Who surprised? Not me. I have given every Taylor Jenkins Reid a five out of five. I, I just, I love her books. I love them. So this book takes place, I want to say it's the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 1983. Um, and it follows the Riva family. And you follow, like, all of them. There's, like, five Rivas. You follow, um... Nina who's having this house party that she has every single year at her house and it's kind of takes place all in one night at her house during this party and you learn about the Rivas family and how tumultuous they are of how their parents got together of how their dad was a famous rock star that kind of left them about how they've had to fend for themselves for a long time how their mom had to be a single mom also you get um hear from like the dad now he was raised and the mom and how she was raised and it's just a really um depictation of a family and you get to really learn the ins and outs of them of each different character and as they're going through something but family is the core of this book I would say. There is a lot of like random scenes with uh, like different party goers that take place over a couple of pages that follows their point of view which I didn't love. A lot of people complain about it and I could see how that's warranted. It didn't add much to the story. I didn't like that but I love this just the dichotomy of the family and how you learn more about them and how they're strong but also kind of faltering as well. Um, it's a beautiful book. I loved it. Highly recommended. It. It's a great summer read because all the rivers love to surf and they live like in Malibu, California. Malibu rising. Um, so it's a great one to read in summer if you want a book about family at the core of it. So there you have all the books I read in June. 12 of them. If I talk too fast, I apologize, but there was 12 books to talk about, so quite a lot. I'll probably read a lot for July in August and then it's just gonna pretty much be non-existent after that for a while which is totally okay with me but I would love to know if you've read any of these books what you thought about them did you have the same feelings as me or not I would love to hear thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye